Hello everyone. Now our next concept is polymorphism. Now we are uh, studying the concepts of uh, polymorphism examples, polymorphic behavior and uh, what are the different types of the polymorphism. Now see first what is the polymorphism that is introduction of the polymorphism. The polymorphism means uh, the ability to assume the several forms and it is a very important concept in the object oriented programming language because it uh, because it refers to the ability of an entity to refer to the objects of various classes at runtime so it simply means that one name and multiple forms okay and the purpose of the polymorphism is uh, to provide a way for an entity to behave in several forms uh, like the same gear lever of the car can be used to move the car forward or backward means same lever it is used we can also use to car forward also and that same gear we can used to move the car backward also okay next uh, there are the different types of the polymorphism uh, compile time polymorphism and the runtime polymorphism so what is mean by the compile time polymorphism compile time polymorphism means uh, the function uh, call is invoked at the compile time means uh, the overloaded member functions are selected for invoking by matching the arguments both type and the number so this information is known to the compiler at the compile time so therefore compiler is able to select the appropriate function for a particular call at the compile time itself so it is called as a compile time polymorphism it is also known as a early binding or the static binding or static linking and also known as a compile time polymorphism it is called as a early binding means an object is bound to its function call at the compile time and uh, method overloading is the type of that compile time polymorphism okay so second type of the polymorphism is runtime polymorphism so as the name suggests that it is a function invoking invocation is done at the runtime so it's called as a runtime polymorphism okay <clears throat> so why it is called as a runtime polymorphism because the function is linked with a particular class much later after the compilation so this process is termed as a late binding okay and it is also known as a dynamic binding because the selection of the appropriate function is done dynamically at runtime okay so it is also called as a runtime polymorphism so uh, the method overriding is the type of the runtime pol polymorphism now see uh, detail in what is the method overloading and method overriding one by one now see here in this slide um, i have defined the method overloading concept here so if a class has the multiple methods having the same name but different in parameters then it is known as a method overloading and uh, if we have to perform only one operation having the same name of the methods then it increases the readability of the program because we have only performing one operation but different uh, methods okay same operation but different method so it increases the readability of the program so having the same name multiple method same name but different parameters is known as the method overloading uh, so there are the different ways to overload the method so what are the different methods to overload the uh, functions in java first type is the by changing the number of arguments second is by changing the data type so first one is by changing the number of arguments means uh, we define the multiple methods and we can change the arguments like uh, in first method we can take only two arguments in the second we can take the three or four or five okay and second type is the changing data type means we can uh, in the first method we can take the integer float double in the second method we can take the double integer okay so this is the methods uh, different ways to overload the method by changing the number of arguments and by changing the data type now uh, i have uh, i have made programs of 
this changing the number of arguments and changing the data type now see here this examples i have uh, implemented here the first one is the changing a uh, number of arguments see here there is a class change argument there then there is a method add and there are the two uh, parameters are there uh, two arguments are there integer a and integer b and there is a simple statement the sum with the two arguments the same method is overloaded here add and there are the three uh, arguments are there okay integer a integer b and integer c so there is a simple print of print ln statement that display this sum a plus b plus c and there is a main method is there and i have created one argument uh, object of that change argument class and by using that object i have called this overloaded methods oh, so we can understand that which method is uh, we are calling or which method is invoking so in the first method ca dot add we are taking here the there are the two parameters are there so it is understood that for compiler there are the uh, function with the two parameters is invoked at the compile time and the second is ca dot add and there are the three parameters are there so at the compile time it is known that there are the three arguments add method with the three arguments is invoked okay so <clears throat> And the parameters are fast for the uh, two parameters are 10 and 20 and for the second method is 6 7 and 8 now you can see the output here in the output window after running this file so see here sum with the two arguments is 30 that is 10 and 20 and sum with the three arguments is 21 that's 6 7 and 8 so this is the example of uh, method overloading with changing the number of arguments because in the first method uh, i have uh, i have taken the two uh, arguments and in the second method overloaded method i have taken the three arguments is there okay and the next type of that method overloading is changing the data type of the uh, method so here i have taken one class that change data type uh, then in that add method is there and there are the two parameters are there but the data type of this uh, parameters are different first a is the integer and b argument is the data type is the double so and then the second method overloaded method add and there are the two parameters are there a and b and whose uh, type data type is double so i have created one object of that change data type class and by using that object i have called add overloaded methods so by passing the arguments that 50 and 40 for integer and double and um, uh, for the second method is i have pass uh, i have took the parameters like 15.5 and 1.3 now you can see the output of this uh, program now see here first one is uh, integer a and double b that is 90.0 and uh, second one is double uh, 16.8 so you can understand uh, understood by this uh, uh, um, studying this examples that uh, we can take the arguments changing that is the number of arguments we can take uh, method overloading example and by changing the data type also we can uh, implement the method overloading uh, these are the two types of the uh, overloaded uh, ways to overloading the method now next the, this is the runtime polymorphism that is method overriding so in a class hierarchy uh, when a method in a subclass has the same name and the type signature as a method in its superclass then the method in the subclass is said to override the method in the superclass so when an overridden method is called then it will always refer to the method defined by the subclass and the method defined by the superclass will be hidden so uh, to access the hidden method of the superclass the super keyword is used in the method overriding so one of the method of the uh, then uh, what are the rule different rules for the java method overriding so first one is a method must have the same name as in the parent class or uh, same name as in the super class and the method must have the same parameter as in the 
parent class or the super class and there must be an is a relationship that is inheritance this is a necessary condition that is there is one super class and there is the one sub class also that is is a relationship so uh, one of the method or when one of the type of that runtime polymorphism or method overriding is dynamic dispatch method so by using this dynamic method dispatch we can achieve the runtime polymorphism okay so method overriding forms the basis for one of the java's most powerful concept that is dynamic method dispatch the runtime polymorphism is achieved by using the dynamic method dispatch and uh, it is a technique uh, by which a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime instead of compile time that's why this overridden method is resolved at runtime that's why it is called as a runtime polymorphism so uh, you can see that there is a, a main difference between the method overloading and method overriding in the method overloading there are the same function name but the number of arguments are different and the data type is also different but in the method overriding the condition is that the parent name super class name and the sub class name method must be same okay and there is a there is condition is there is a is a relationship that is there there this is a uh, one of the most uh, important difference between the method overloading and method overriding so this is all about the uh, polymorphism and its type okay thank you